I'm here to inspire you to change the world. Now I know as soon as I say that, half of you just went, okay, I'm out. Yeah, I'm not, not capable of changing the world, right? So, so for those of you who are that way, let me give you a gift today. It's the most uh, special gift and the most important gift that I think you can give another human being, the gift of perspective. And here's your gift of perspective here today. You don't have to change the whole world in order to change the world. You just have to change one part of the world, your world. And I think everybody has the capacity to do that by making one simple choice. And I'm going to tell you the one simple choice that I made that totally changed my whole world. And I think it's, it's what's now being used to inspire others to change their worlds as well. And see, my vision is that this chain reaction of choice after choice after choice of people choosing to do one little thing, something to better someone else's world is going to spread and eventually we will collectively change the entire world. How many of you experienced love at first sight? Yeah, I know I did, right? Now, how many of you experienced love at first sight when you were five years old. Oh, no, no more hands? Oh, some of you? Yeah, absolutely, great, fantastic. Well, I definitely did. I experienced love at first sight when I was five years old. This girl named Stephanie, I knew I was gonna marry her. I told everybody I was gonna marry her. They all said, you can't possibly know that. You're only five years old. It's a phase, you'll grow out of it. I said, no, I won't. When I was nine years old, I was still madly in love with this girl, Stephanie. And so I made her a Valentine's card. It was this cute little red construction paper heart and it had pink construction paper on the inside. And on the inside in the middle I wrote, you'll always be the love of my life. Signed, your secret admirer. And I was so excited to send this to Stephanie. And my parents said, you can't send that to Stephanie. I said, why not? They said, it's too strongly worded for a nine year old. Right, and so I didn't get to send it to Stephanie. Uh, but I hung on to it because I knew one day I was going to marry this girl. There was just one problem. She didn't know that. In fact, she didn't even like me, right? She didn't like me at all, all of our growing up years. And our two families were best friends, so we spent a lot of time together. And it was really weird trying to, you know, be friendly, but yet not be friends. You know, we were awkward around each other. We uh, really couldn't be in the same room together. Like it just, it just didn't feel right. It was uncomfortable because I was madly in love with her and she didn't like me at all. But I didn't give up on this. And when I was 18, I walked into her dad's office and I said, I am in love with your daughter. I want to marry your daughter. And he said, I think you should learn how to talk to her first. Because I didn't know this, maybe you know this, uh, talking to someone and being able to be in the same room with them is pretty standard married people stuff, right? I was just an 18 year old. I didn't know you had to do all that. I thought you'd just walk into the dad's office and say, I wanna marry your daughter and he'd just give you his daughter, right? Uh, that's how it's supposed to work. Uh, so I had this great idea that maybe the reason she didn't like me was because I told everybody else that I was in love with her, but I never actually told her. And so my brilliant idea was I was gonna tell her that I was in love with her and she would fall for me, right? And so I called her because I was way too scared to do this in person. So I called her on the phone and I said, look, I am in love with you. I've always been in love with you. I wanna, I wanna have a deeper relationship with you. And she says, I don't like you like at all. And I knew that, but it still hurt. Uh, but I brushed it off really quickly and I said, okay, new idea. What if we just tried to be really good friends? You know, we've never really given that a fair shot. What if we move past this, okay, now, now I've got it out in the open, I'm in love with you, blah, blah, blah. Let's just try to be friends. And to my surprise, she agreed. And here's how my brain was thinking. We're gonna be really good friends. We're gonna get to know one another. I'll woo her and then she'll fall for me. Right, and that was a great idea. And so here's what we did. Uh, we, my family traveled full time. We, we were never in one place very long. And so I had to do this relationship long distance. And so to make it work, a long distance friendship that I hoped would turn into a long distance relationship uh, with a girl, uh, I came up with this idea that we would send each other questions. Could be anything. It was, it ranged from what's your favorite movie to 
How many kids do you want to have? So we asked some pretty serious questions and I would ask one and it would start a conversation and then the next day it was her turn to ask a question and it would start a conversation. And we did this for about a year and a half, sending questions back and forth, springing into longer conversations. We got to know each other really well and we actually became really good friends. And for the first time in my young life, it felt like finally what had been impossible was starting to become possible. She was falling for me. I knew it. And so I decided to make my move. And so I said, look, I am still in love with you. Now we're really great friends. I'd love to take this relationship to the next level. And she said, I still don't feel that way about you. And this time it absolutely wrecked me. And I felt like the whole world that I was standing on just got pulled out from underneath my feet because the woman that I loved and kept loving and kept loving still didn't like me. And I didn't really know what to do with that. And so the only thing that I knew to do was to keep doing what we had been doing. And uh, we kept asking questions. We kept being friends. Uh, we did this for another about six months and during that time something that might seem completely unrelated actually played a huge role in what ended up actually happening i had a really bad day i had a bad day where i wrecked my mom's day and made her have a really bad day all of our family was in town for thanksgiving she had this great big day planned we were going to go do some fun things and i just complained about it all day long I was acting really immature and it ruined her day and she got really mad at me about it and it it kind of caused me to look at myself and go I'm almost 20 years old why am I acting like an immature junior high kid and it, it was this big mental shift for me and I told Stephanie about it because we were great friends I was like I don't want to be this person I don't want to be this kind of uh, immature selfish person that ruins people's days because I have a bad attitude and uh, I shared all of that with her and and things actually started to change in my life I actually started to become a better person because of that and I was still great friends with Stephanie and and we were kind of moving into this sort of limbo type relationship where we weren't where we were but we still weren't into a deeper relationship and it, it kind of felt like maybe we could switch at any particular moment but none of us were really talking about it and I finally just couldn't take that anymore and so a, a, around Christmas time I drove up to her house and I had this big speech prepared I was about 45 minutes away and I was rehearsing this speech in my head as I'm driving to her house I was gonna walk in and just pronounce I love you I've always loved you I'm willing to wait for you if you can ever see yourself with me but if you just can't see that happening I have to know so that I can move on so I finally get there to her house and her parents are sitting in, in the room with her. It looked like they had just gotten done with talking probably about me. Uh, I walk in, I start into my speech. I love you, I've always loved you. I'm willing to wait for you. I just have to know, is this ever going to work? Her parents looked at each other and they said, we think we should leave you guys alone for a little while. And they walked out of the room. So now it's just me and Stephanie. And she looks at me and she says, something's different about you. Something has changed in you in the last couple of months. And for the first time, I think I love you. And I was not expecting that at all. And I started to tear up a little bit because the joy that filled my heart at that particular moment was more intense than anything I'd ever experienced. All of my hopes all of my dreams for pretty much my entire life had just come true in an instant. The impossible had become possible. She loved me! It's amazing! I wanted to run laps around the house and just tell people that she loved me, right? And it was amazing. It was an amazing moment. It was an amazing feeling. And because my family traveled full time and we had a, a schedule of bookings that was way out in advance, we actually had to set a wedding date that day. And so I went from not knowing if I was in a relationship to pretty much being unofficially engaged with a wedding date set all in about the space of two hours. It's a pretty big roller coaster. But our story wasn't over because about two months later we had our first big fight. And that big fight 
was over something now in retrospect i i thought it was silly at the time but now that i i know who she is it's uh it was a big deal to her and i didn't understand that it was a big deal i just thought maybe it would be nice if we waited a little bit before we had a kid she did not think that was okay it was one of her foundational beliefs and i didn't get that about her and because i didn't get that about her we argued about it all day and by the end of the day we were both so worn out that she just finally said if that's the way you think i can't be married to someone like that and all the joy and all of the hopes and dreams coming true of just a couple months before suddenly just vanished and was replaced by 10 times of hurt and i was just crushed i was absolutely decimated I don't think you understand how devastated I was, so I'll share this with you. I, I went into my parents' bedroom and I laid down on my mom's bed with my the tears just streaming down my face and I texted her, Mommy, I need you. I'm not proud of that, but I stayed like that for about two weeks. 20 year old, young man, just a wreck. My whole identity was wrapped up in this girl who I had loved since I was five years old. And now she says she can't marry me. I didn't know what to do. I didn't even know who I was. I stayed in this state of, I guess, depression. It was the closest I've ever been to depression in my life for about two weeks. And then finally, I enlisted the help of my dad and her dad. We were a long way away from each other at that time. And so we got on a conference call with her and I and our two dads, and we, we talked it through. For about an hour we talked it through and finally I realized uh, what it would take to to get back on the same page and the wedding was back on but it still hurt to this day thinking about it both of us it still hurts but it's those marks and bruises and scars and the way we got through it that now on the other side has made us the truly beautiful people that we are the truly beautiful marriage that we have, the beautiful family that we have, it is a product of the bruises and the marks and the scars that came when we loved someone enough that we would love them through that hurt and not give up on them, even when it got hard. See, that's a choice that everybody can make. You can make that choice. I made that choice and I'm not special, I'm just stubborn. I just decided I'm gonna love this person no matter what. And so Valentine's Day comes around. We're in Arizona at the time. She's flying in to be with us. And it's Valentine's Day. I haven't actually proposed yet. We just set a wedding date. And so I'm going to propose on Valentine's Day. And I found this perfect spot. It was overlooking a lake, which is rare in Arizona. It's hard to find a lake in Arizona. And so I had found this beautiful lake. And it was right off the road. There was this overlook that that looked out over this beautiful lake and there was these mountains surrounding it. It was a gorgeous spot. We drove out there and that's where I gave her her Valentine's card. And it was a red construction paper heart with pink construction paper inside. And on the middle it wrote, you'll always be the love of my life. Signed, your secret admirer. I gave it to her and I said, I made this for you when I was nine years old. And I always hoped that one day I'd be able to give it to you. And as she was looking at the Valentine's card, I got down on one knee and I pulled out my ring and I said, and now I want to give this to you too. Stephanie, will you marry me? Now she's walking down the aisle all dressed in white. I was just thinking about all of the different times that I had a chance to give up. All of the times when I could have just said, this is impossible, there's probably an easier fish in the sea, a girl that will just decide to love me because she thinks I'm cute. But this one girl that I knew I was gonna marry, I never gave up. I loved even though she hurt me multiple times. I hurt her multiple times. And now that we've been married for nine years and have five beautiful children, we look back on all of those experiences and we know, we know that we wouldn't have what we had today if it wasn't for what we'd been through. And I wrote this song because I, I really do think 
that it's it's within all of us to just make the choice to love someone because what would happen if you loved your difficult family member that way what would happen if you loved your neighbor that way what would happen if you loved your coworker that way what if you changed someone's world just by making a choice to love them no matter how much they hurt you no matter how hard it was to love them what if one act of kindness could totally change the course of their destiny and your destiny and that just continued to spread until we're telling the story of how our love changed the world you make me smile see the world without a care you make me laugh they afraid to love till it hurts to love through the hurt to be kind to other people no matter what don't be afraid to make the choice to do what feels impossible because one day the impossible will become possible for you and you'll find not only are you a better person but your whole world has been transformed and if your world can be transformed then someone else's world can be transformed. If everybody's world is transformed, guess what? Our whole, our whole world gets changed. Thank you very much.
Wow. Thank you.